Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome back to City of Gangsters where finally we've unlocked a few secrets of the hotel because for ages, for so many many long years, we had no idea what Victor at the Grand Hotel wanted to drink because it was all a bit hush hush all these things over here were all set to question marks, they were all unknown resources but now we've learned some new skills and we know that the hotel want both proper gin and fruit cordials which is sort of to be expected you know, they're sort of fancy upmarket booze you know, proper gin and fancy fruit cordials to put in cocktails because you know the hotel is sort of a bit posh it's a bit posh and a bit fancy pants so that kind of makes sense so we'll try and do something with that at some point today if we can however our first job is not over here at the hotel it's actually just down the road a bit over here at the moonshine operation because this got upgraded last time and because it did get upgraded we have to go and sort out the expansions again because for whatever reason when you upgrade an operation and it has expansions after the upgrade the expansions are all gone. I don't quite know why. I don't quite know why that happens, but there we go. They're all gone, so we need to sort of put them back in. Now, what are we looking at with this? So, 18 neutral alcohol and 45 crocs makes 55 moonshine. Okay, right. So, let's see if we can make that a little bit better. So, have we got any money in here, actually? We've got $15,000. I think we have enough money to carry out a few expansions. Goodness me, that's very good. Um, okay, right. So, what shall we have first? Right, this thing here ethnic solidarity that is absolutely brilliant one of the best things we've ever ever learned so 750 dollars means that these numbers here are going to come down so currently 18 neutral alcohol and 45 crocs down to 50 and 36 i mean that is a very very good saving on crocs that's very good because yeah we are struggling with those at the minute okay that's good right and then polish spirit stills this was a skill i think we picked up last time I think we picked this up last time, so we've not seen how good this is yet. But um, yeah, it's a similar, there's similar things for the other, you know, for the wine operations and the beer operations and the cider and stuff. But okay, so let's put this in. So 700 monies. So currently, so 15, 36, 55, 15, 36, 68. So that's another 12, no, 13, math with pen. That's another 13 crocs of moonshine that we're making, which is very good. And then the final expansion, I mean... That one there, high quality yeast, has got the biggest kind of little, uh, biggest little, the biggest very small square in it just there. I mean, that square is small, that square is small, that square is still small, but it's not as small as the other two. So let's go for some high quality yeast. Now, I don't quite know what this does. It would be nice if it told you what these did. If it said, you know, it adds plus 10% to your yield or whatever. Um, okay, do you know what? It's got the biggest kind of box thing on it. It's $800. I'm sure it's fine. So 15, 36, 68. 15, 36, 68. Okay. That seemed to do entirely nothing at all. Oh, 10% faster. Oh, I didn't notice the speed. Oh, okay. I mean, speed is not really of great importance. I would rather have had those things doing a little bit better. Um, Hang on. Oh, now we need to get... Do you know what? We've got $125,000. I think it's fine. Let's get rid of that one. So we don't want high quality yeast. Production tracking, that improves the operation. Is that speed? Or a steam sanitizer increases production by 10%. Yeah, let's get a steam sanitizer in. So what are we on? 15, 36, 68, 15, 36, 75. That is very good. 75 crocs of moonshine. That's gone up a great deal. Okay, right. Very happy with that. However, I do notice that, yeah, the neutral alcohol is absolutely fine. However, we are struggling for crocs. We are having a little bit of a kind of a croc supply issue. And I think that applies to other places as well. I think over here, how are we looking over here for crocs? 30.16 and you need 41. So they're a bit short as well. Over here in beer world, what do we need? 56 and they've got, what have they got? Nine. Okay, right. Tiny kind of croc based issue here. Oh, and this is a problem as well. Um... Oh no, they've got 165 crocs over there. <laughs> they've got lots of crocs over there. Um, okay, okay, hang on a minute. I wonder if something I was, you know, on one of the uh, trade routes is taking a lot of crocs over there. And perhaps we don't need to. Hang on, who deals with the wine? Um, Bill, 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 can we have a look at this? Yeah, you're picking up, yeah, Stoneware Crocs to a vehicle has 10. Okay, okay, let's just, let, let's rein that in a bit. Let's go down to, um, I don't know, three. Because your route isn't that long. Oh yeah, that's where they're all going. They're all going over into suds and such. Um, Take two. Take two every time. I'm sure that will be fun. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so save that step. 
and yeah, then drop them off. Okay, right, so that might make things a little bit better. Uh, okay, right, we do need to sort this out kind of urgently, though, because, yeah, places are not going to be making the lovely alcohol. So, I think, Penge Cupboard, drive over here, and let's just move some of these crocs from over here, because they don't need that many. They do not need that many. How much do they need to make a run? 52 every seven turns, and they've got 156. So, just grab as many as you can. Grab, hang on. Let's leave them with 104, because that means they can do two lots. 104.36, three six of a croc. Yes, yeah, so they can do two more runs after this. And that means that, uh, yeah, we've got 61 stone crocs to actually go and give to some other people who might well need it. For example, over here, at the lovely moonshine place. So, yeah, let's go and sort of drop those off over there. Yeah, and then I think Penge Cupboard might busy himself with buying some more crocs from somewhere else. Okay, what do they need? 36. Um, okay, let's make sure that everyone can at least do one more production run for the moment. There we go. So that's that dropped off. Uh, over to the land of cider. What do we need for that? 30 they've got. They need 41. Okay, this is good. This is looking good. We'll drop a few more off in here, actually. There you go. You can have a few more. And then, in terms of the lovely beer, over here to Agnes's place. I mean, Agnes's place does make crocs anyway. Let's drop, I don't know, let's drop a few into there. Put 15, well, leave 15 in there. And we'll head back over here and put the rest back in the moonshine operation. There we go. Right, so you've got some extra crocs to keep you going. Okay, right, there we go. So that's kind of got the moonshine operation sorted out. It's all looking very good. So, uh, right, let's move time on a bit. Let's move time on. And Penge Cupboard and possibly Steve as well. Have you got any money, Steve? $284. I think Steve and Penge Cupboard should just go around the place and just pick up some resources. So pick up some crocs, pick up some bottles, maybe pick up some of the grape concentrate. Just go around and just sort of, you know, restock a little bit. Just kind of pick up important things. So yeah, we'll just move time on a little bit as they go around and do that. Because uh, yeah, that seems like a good, sensible thing to do. Because, you know, we have all these kind of potential things we could do with the hotel. We could go and invest in making, you know, real gin or fruit cordials or whatever. But yeah, we need to keep all of our, you know, sort of regular stuff going. We've got to take care of the, all the sort of you know, the normal operations before we start looking at really sort of fancy pants ones. So, right, Penge Cupboard and Steve, there you go. You've got a job. Go and drive about the place and just keep things ticking over. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed by and both Penge Cupboard and Steve have been driving about the place, picking up resources and then dropping them off where they are required. And then we came all the way over here. So Penge Cupboard is all the way over here, right next to Dmitriev territory. So it's a little bit kind of bold and brazen of Penge Cupboard, but he's over here having a chat with Dominica and Dominica knows somebody of interest and it says here that yeah there's somebody I think they're over here so I don't think they are in the enemy territory I think they're just about here and it says here and um, given the rising thirst of the city I know you probably need more materials for your homemade beer and she's got lots to spare if you'd like that is quite interesting so normally when we use this kind of favor thing up it's somebody saying yeah I know somebody who wants to buy the homemade beer but this person here might be able to provide materials for the homemade beer so yeah okay let's go and have, with, have a chat with you all the way over here all the way on that next corner along that we never got to so I assume is it you there how many action points have we got oh yeah we've got a, we've got a couple so we'll use that one up I assume it's over here then yeah so Dorothy okay so Dorothy, what do you want to sell? Stoneware crocs. Okay, very useful indeed. We shall pick some up because we are only 30, no, we've got 56% full in the van. So pick up another 30 of those and that's a good amount of crocs. Okay, okay, right. So it's very good over here. So if we look over here now, uh, I favorited all the kind of resources we were looking for. So over here, we've got crocs, 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 and also bottles. And Penge Cupboard has picked up 10 bottles as well. That's all they had at the time. But yeah, so it's looking good. It is looking very good. So, right, Penge Cupboard, make your way back over to... Go over here first and drop the bottles off. And then, yeah, we'll figure out where needs all those crocs you now have. Okay, so bottles dropped off into the sort of bottle beer place. Very good. And I think... I think... Hang on a second. Hang on. How are we doing over here at Agnes's place? So how many crocs are there? 48. And they need 56 to do a production run. There's also 12 malt syrup. We have been picking that up as well. So, okay, we do have enough for another run which is very good. So I think, yeah, Penge Cupboard, drop a few off over there. However, on your way, just pop a few into the uh, into the moonshine place as well. Just put a few into there. How many do they need? 36. Do you know what? Let's drop off, I don't know, a few into there. Um, 
Could they get up to 72 to have some more goes at that? Yeah, so there we go. And then 14 can go right over here into Agnes's place. And that should mean that they're able to get another production run in, I think. So drop those in. So 62, which is very good. They need 56 to do the next run. Okay, right. So we can produce loads of beer. That's very good. Uh, the moonshine is looking pretty good. How are we looking over here? Uh, we're down on grape concentrate. That is a bit of a problem. We might have to possibly use our building here, which we had kind of, you know, sidelined for a fancy sort of operation. We might need to use that to actually start making our own grape concentrate because I think we only have one place that we know. Oh no, there's some places all the way over here in enemy territory that do sell grape concentrate. I mean, they're quite far away. Um, so yeah, that is a bit tricky to get our hands on. We are struggling to find that anywhere over here. Nope, anywhere over here. One place all the way over there. So yeah, it's really far away. It's really, really far away. So it might make sense to use our building over here to make grape concentrate. Although, although that's just going to be providing one thing. It's yeah, we're using up a whole building to just provide some grape concentrate to one of our things. Although if we don't, then you know the wine operation is going to cease to function, and that's a bad thing. Um, okay, this is quite a tricky decision. This is quite a tricky thing. Now, currently, you will notice, if we look over here, the Hewitts, hang on. So the Hewitts have got kind of that sort of space there. If we go and look at that, where are we in terms of... Yeah, so they've got one, two places over there that sell grape concentrate. And they have quite a lot of places. They've got three places that we can see that sell the Crocs. And they might have loads more over here. I think, I think it's time we do the thing that we discussed. I think... Hang on, what? Who, who is the... Who's Leonard Cupboard? Hang on a minute. Leonard Cupboard is a member of the Hewitt outfit. My, <gasps> my brother, my own brother. This is, this is betrayal of the most extreme type. I am absolutely horrified. Oh, Leonard, Leonard, what are you doing? Why are you working for the Hewitts? Why didn't you come to us for a job, Leonard? Because this, this might mean that we kind of have to kill you a bit, Leonard. Oh my goodness me, this is shocking. I didn't even realise we had a brother, necessarily, you know, not even that they're in the game. Oh, oh, okay. Right, I mean, that that certainly changes things, doesn't it? That certainly changes the complexion of what we're going to do. Because I was going to go in and go, okay, right, the Hewitts are getting a little bit near to us. They're getting very close over here a little bit too close for comfort over there um so yeah we could just take them out but i mean that's our brother that's our brother oh my goodness me and look at that he's got a very good expression on his face he's got a kind of quizzical raised eyebrow going on in fact he looks remarkably like this chappy here although arthur royal is wearing a vest and um yeah leonard our brother is wearing a very very fancy looking suit okay okay right so we have our brother working for a rival outfit which is shocking. If you'd have come to us, Leonard, we would have given you a job. You could have had a job. You could work at the painting place making you know, grape concentrate or whatever, living the dream. Okay, right. So how many people do they have? The Hewitts have one, two, three. Oh, no, that's a diamond outfit. Hang on. Hang on. What? Oh, that's part of their turf. Oh, okay, right. So one, two. Oh, crikey. There's a bit of a cluster of them over there. So three, four, and they've got five people. Okay. So if we were to, say, stop operations for a while and go in and sort of take some of these people out, for example, Maxine, if we were to take out Maxine, she's the head of the operation, then things would get, you know, a little bit kind of messed up, a little bit, a little bit complicated for them. But then we've still got to take out another four people and they can go and recruit some more after that. I mean, that could be, that could be a tall order. And that also does mean we're going to have to drag people away from their current sort of roots, which is also a bit of a problem. Okay, and also, yeah, our brother works for the Hewitts. I feel, I feel very much betrayed. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know we had a brother. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. My flabber is well and truly gasted. Leonard Cupboard. Oh, Leonard. Oh, Leonard. Where did it go wrong between us, Leonard? Come back to us, Leonard. We love you. I mean, looking over here at the Dmitriev outfit, there are six of those. There's an awful lot of those to get rid of, so they could be quite tricky to remove as well. But we're not so close to them. I'm not so bothered about them over there right now. They're not too much of a concern. The Hewitts are quite close. What about the diamonds? Can we see how many diamonds there are? 
So there's, yeah, definitely there's four there. And there's this one down here in this weird little sort of bit they've got down here. So they have five people. Yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be tricky. If we do decide to go on a bit of a, a bit of a sort of, you know, a shooty, shooty rampage type thing. Um, then yes, it's going to be quite complicated to work out who is going to go after who and move everybody into the right place and go and get the right people and all that kind of stuff. Okay, right. We really, really need to think about that very carefully if we want to go and do that. I think right now, let's just get to the end of the year. Let's get to the end of the year and see how we get on. Although, yes, we do have the slight problem here of no grape concentrate. Okay, right. There's a place up here that sells grape concentrate. So we have been there already. Penge Cupboard went there, but hopefully they might have a bit more. And then possibly, could we... They're not going to sell to us, are they, though? All those people... Ah, oh, botherations. This is all... This is kind of forcing us toward a more sort of... A more fighty way round of things. Unless... Unless there are a few people that do want to talk to us. There are some people who want to actually have a word with us. Maybe some of those people are seeing the problems with our sort of supply chain there and might want to give us that quest again. I don't know. Do you know what? It's worth a go. Penge Cupboard, go and pick up some quests and hope that one of them is one we need. Okay, so Ruth here over at the cold storage place, she is saying that her uncle has fallen into a vat or something unpleasant at the factory. He's in a coma and his wife is already planning the wake. I'd like to provide the moonshine for a proper one. Can you help? As long as he hasn't fallen into a vat of moonshine, then that's probably fine. If he has, that might be a little bit insensitive. But okay, yeah, that's fine. So 20 moonshine. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Do you know what? We'll go and pick up a few missions because that will keep Penge Cover busy. And hopefully, I really hope that we happen across something that gives us grape concentrate. Um, over here, Ruby. Ruby, one of our very, very bestest friends. Absolutely, Ruby. We always have a moment for you. Um, during a recent delivery, your driver let slip that you're swimming in moonshine. Well, not entirely, but we're making a few. So you want 40 moonshine. Uh, okay, right, yeah, that's fine. We're just going to deliver some moonshine. Uh, okay, right, next mission. Hello, Walter, how are you? Absolutely, let's have a chat. Um, news has spread that you're making moonshine. Oh my goodness me, everybody loves the moonshine. Okay, no, you want 20? Yeah, okay, fine. I mean, I'm sort of seeing a pattern here. All of the missions that we're getting so far are quite moonshine heavy. Um, are there any others? I think, can we not see up here? There's a report up here. Uh, missions. No, that's active missions. Hang on, where's sort of, where's, where's pending missions? Is there a list of those? Pending requests. Yeah. Okay, so Magdalena O'Rourke. She lives quite far away. She lives pretty much across the other side of town. It would take me about a year to get over to that side of town. And probably a year to get back. I don't think we'll be going to talk to you. Um, ah, okay, yes, you have a mission. So Florence and Andrew over here. Yeah, okay, that's slightly more plausible. Let's head in that direction. Uh, run out of movement points, but that's all fine. Here we go. And we have two level ups. Steve has leveled up. Well done, Steve. Um, okay, Steve, your job is to be the, the you know, sort of heavy, the fighty person. So there you go. Let's get you better at brawling. And that might actually come into play at some point. And John the Johnster Lee. Remind me what he does. We have so many people. Um, yeah, he's the moonshine delivery person. Um, okay, oh, and you can become a captain. You can become a captain as well. This is wonderful. We have so many captains. So many splendid captain folk. Um, okay, right. So, Penge Cupboard, whereabouts are you? Um, let's go to... Hang on, though. However... I'm in a hurry. Remind me later for now. Can you fix my car? Because it looks like it's going to fall apart. $89. Splendid stuff. Right now, go back in. Yes, I am listening, Andrew Wilkinson. Let's have a chat. Um, okay, this is a sort of a front-based kind of mission thing. Okie doke. Um, okay, uh, this is about vehicles. We could pick up another vehicle if we would like to. So five crowbars. We might have a few of those lying around the place. And $1,000. I think we can cope with that. Yeah, okay, that's all fine. Yep, yeah, that's that's all good. And then over here to Wilkinson Smith for the final mission. Yes, I am listening. Um, I've been thinking about the bathtub gin business and how we might make more money together. Have you? Funny, I didn't know that we had a bathtub gin business together. Okay, so she is saying have a bathtub gin operation and a bathtub still uh, gin still thing in your buildings. I don't think we're going to do that right now. I don't think that's something that we're going to do. I figured I'd ask. It was worth asking, but no, it's not for us. I don't think we're going to go down that route. Uh, okay, 
Right, well, we have a few sort of moonshine delivery missions. Have we got enough moonshine? I do hope so. 0.74 crocs. There we go. Brilliant stuff. We're going to get 75 crocs of it pretty soon. We'll just sort of just sort of sit around and wait, I suppose. Okay, another year has gone by. It is now 1931. So let's have a look how well we're doing. Okay, so five legacy goals met. I think that is pretty much the same as we had last time. Yeah. So if we actually reach and maintain six of them, that's kind of, that's the ultimate victory. That turns us into the stuff of legend. So three is okay. Three is kind of well known. Six is you are a legend. Okay, right. We're on five. We're getting there. However, time is running out ever so slightly. So um, net worth. Yep, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, we haven't got enough corners. I don't think we can do that. That requires an awful lot of uh, grabbing corners and such. We'll maybe go and get another couple of corners under our control. Um, Captain's got loads of those. That's brilliant. Um, collector of Favours, that's all very good. Railroads and Freight, not got any of those. Right, Producer of Alcohols, we're still number one, which is good. Distributor, still number one. Very nice indeed. Hopefully, hopefully we can get this hotel one sorted. That would be brilliant if we could do that. And um, and then, yes, if we do go and have a fight, if we do go and have a fight, we might be able to possibly get this complete. And we only need to complete this, I think, as well. We need to go and do what? Neutralise maybe one more sort of, one more gang? And that'll be it. And that'll get that completed, which will be very handy as well. And that one there is not going to happen because they don't like us at all. So, okay. Okay, right. Good stuff. It is looking good. However, yes, we've got 1931. 32 and then a bit of 33 I think I think it goes almost to the end so we've got about three years ish in game to try and get some more of those goals sorted but okay right now you notice that quite a bit of time did move on because yeah the, one of the production runs was done over here but then um thing with Bob this guy this sort of uh, yeah Johnster the Johnster came in and he was very efficient so he kind of drove in and picked up the moonshine and drove away with it before Penge Cupboard could actually pick any up so he's been told to just you know calm down for a bit how much moonshine do we need? 40, 60, 80. We need 80 moonshine to do all of this kind of stuff we need. Now, do we even have 80? No, we have 75. Okay, <laughs> good. Can we accommodate 80? Um, no, okay, we can accommodate all there is, but that's going to be no good, is it? Okay, let's put some back into the thing. Uh, let's just take 60. That'll do for now. Take 60.98. Is that going to stick around forever? Hang on, put all that back in. We'll take it in... Uh, Take it in, no, that's all of it. Hang on, how do you do it in tens? Like that, there we go. We'll take 60 lots of that and we'll go and do a couple of these. We'll complete two of these. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Johnster, you can start your work again. Start that delivery, apologies. Apologies for the minor interruption there. Um, okay, let's go and do this one then. So uh, yeah, Penge covered all the way over here, if you please, and we'll sort that mission out. That'll be very good. And um, yeah, this is... Um, this is uh, this is our friend Ruby, isn't it? So we really like her. So I have the things you're waiting for. 40 crocs of moonshine. Okay. Oh, this is good. Okay, so we get some money, which is, you know, it's nice. It's not overly important, but it's quite handy. But we get two Winchesters. Or we could just get a big pile of money. I'd rather have objects as well as money because we're not short of a few dollars. So yeah, okay, we'll have some shooty guns, thank you very much, and let's put them into the meats and cheese place, uh, and then where was next? Where's nearest? Uh, oh, that place, it's just down the road, so let's go there and pop into this place and say hello. I've got these things here, 20 crocs of moonshine, thanks and just in time, but it seems the rental for the wake is more than we were planning to afford. Okay, so we can either just go, okay, that's fine. You know, it's okay. We've given you some booze. That's all we can do. Or we can do rental assistance. I imagine they're going to want a big pile of money. Okay. Do you know what? We'll do that. It's all fine. Um, so what do you want now? What's the next thing? $250. Have we got that? Oh, we're $7 short right now. Hang on a second. <laughs> Hang on. Let me nip to the bank. Also known as Agnes's house. Uh, there we go. Let's pick up. A bit of money from here. In fact, you know what? Pick up a thousand dollars, Penge Cupboard, because that's always handy. So, right, back we go over to here again. Right, so hello, I've got the other things you want. There you go, big pile of cash. Right. Oh, I see. Right, we're going to get some goodies. We're going to get some goodies here. So, either scope out the area, don't need that. Gain one favour, not overly useful. So, do you want counterfeit wine, backroom beer, sparkling cider, bathtub gin? Let's get counterfeit wine and we'll just put that straight into the... Hang on, hang on. 
What does the speakeasy accommodate again? I can't quite remember. Hang on a sec. Let's pop across the road. It accommodates... It, oh, it's beer. It's beer. Okay, yeah, we'll have some backroom beer, please. We'll put that straight into the place. Always happy. Backroom beer. There we go. And put that into Republic Car Sales, please. Well, there we go. So a couple of missions out of the way. That one's going to take a while. And that one, I suppose we could go and do that now. Okay, here we are at the storage place. I imagine we might have a few crowbars lying around. Do we have any... 29 crowbars lying around. My goodness me, that's quite a lot. Okay, so they only want five, a paltry five of them, and a thousand of the monies. Right, hang on a minute. Where have we got to go with this? It's over there. Okay, right, hang on a sec. We'll just, um, we shall nip over to here, pick up a little bit more money, and then we'll get that sorted as well, because, you know, it's another mission sort of out the way. We'll have another thousand dollars. Thank you very much. It's like petty cash now. Right, so go over there. And we shall go. Okay, here are the things. Here's some crowbars. Oh, we struggled to get those. Hope you appreciate it. And a thousand of the dollars. And then here we go. It's another one of these kind of vehicle things. Do you know what? Let's just get this skill. Let's get this skill. We have plenty of trucks. We've got, what have we got? A pickup truck. Uh, what have we got? Three delivery trucks and a car. Just sort of, you know, scattered around Chicago. So let's just get this skill. And then if we ever get this mission again, that's not going to come up. So do you know what? Yeah, we'll pick up a skill because why not? It's a handy thing to have. So, um, yep, there we go. Lovely new skill. So what have we got? Negotiation assistant. Have a friend with a barely concealed weapon accompany you when you go to look for a new vehicle. Prices will be miraculously lower. Okay. I don't think we need to worry about that too much. We have many, many vehicles. Okay, just thinking with Steve, because Steve is one of our kind of enforcer heavy type chaps. Why don't we send him over here? I don't think we've had a chat with this gang yet. And if we can get them to become compliant, that might give us that extra little sort of 2% we need in the sort of, you know, the main goals to actually get that main goal sorted. Because we were on sort of 48%, I think, for making the gangs, you know, sort of either go away or be compliant. So I think if we just get one more gang, that means we can get that ticked off. And that will be very good. So we haven't been over here by the look of it. Or this is a new gang. So he is going to take a while to get over there. So you drive over in that direction, Steve. And then, uh, yes, see what's going on over here. I think, did you just pop over there? Yeah, there we go. Do you know what? Do you know what? This is fine. We'll just go to the next turn. It's all good. I want to get this done. So here we go. Right, so there is Steve. Um, okay, so... Nika O'Connor, Semenov and the crew. Okay, so their stance is independent. They are neither compliant nor defiant. Okay, do you know what? I don't like the way you're looking at me. Fine, let's do this one. Let's not just go and kill them. Um, okay, so I need to stop harassing businesses. Please don't do that. Oh yeah, what are you going to do? So Steve sort of goes, whoa, I'm going to, whoa, I'll get you. And they go, you look like you mean business. Fine, I don't want any trouble from the likes of you. Okay, so now they are going to stop bothering people, which is very good. And do you know what? Whilst you're here, Steve, uncover those as well. And there we go. There is their safe house. Nice and revealed. Okay, right. Good job, Steve. You are quite near to Maxine down there, Steve. Next turn, do you just want to nip in if she is there and just, you know, maybe just have a little bit of a an exciting sort of lovely chat with her? You know, it was sort of shooty gun sort of chat. Maybe we could do that. Just send Steve in and just see how we get on. And if it looks troublesome, we could always just run away. That'd be fine. Right, Penge Cupboard is over here because this person sells grape concentrate. We will have six lots of that. Thank you very much. It's a shame we don't have more because we are struggling a bit. But okay, right, let's drive over here. Pop that back into suds and such. So that gets them up to 9.38 barrels of grape concentrate. What do they need? They need eight. Okay, so that is enough for them to get some more grape concentrate, not grape concentrate, some more wine underway. Okay, that's really good. What we could do is doing, actually, who looks after our brick wine? It's Bill. It's the wonderfully named Bill Burns. Bill, I think your delivery route is relatively simple, isn't it? Maybe we need to make this ever so slightly more complicated for you, Bill. I think what we need to do is we need to get Bill to come up here every single route, every single sort of time, and pick up as much grape concentrate as he can. Otherwise, that place is just going to run out of run out of grape concentrate and we'll be making no wine at all, which is all very sad. So I think I think we need to do some stuff here. So he's going to end up with 100 money. Oh, how much did we just pay? I don't know. I don't know. OK, right. So drop off all but, I don't know, leave 200 money. That should be OK. Do you know what? Let's up it. Let's put it to 300 money. And then you're going to need a step somewhere. So pick up the brick wine then drop off the brick wine over at Republic Car Sales. Then he's going to go to Agnes's place, pick up some beer, then pick up Crocs. Then he's going to go back over to the... 
over to the speakeasy, drop off the beer, then pick up all available cash from the speakeasy, then go and get your vehicle repaired, and then go back to Suds and such and drop off the Crocs. Okay, I think, I think at that point, there's, uh, there's not really a suitable point to do this, but I think at that point, you drop off the Crocs, and then you make the slightly lengthy journey to Lorenz's Norwegian Packing House, which is not ideal, but there we go. So, we want to go and buy Grape Concentrate from just there. Buy all of it. Buy as much as you jolly well can. So grab all of that, and then, yep, hang on, so uh, do that. So don't drop anything off quite yet. In fact, yeah, you'll have all the money. You'll have all the money, won't you? From from the place anyway, from the speakeasy, which should be lots. Okay, that's fine. Right, so buy the grape concentrate, and then uh, storage drop off, drop off grape concentrate, wherever it might be. There it is. Drop that off at suds and such. There we go. And then move that into the right place. And then drop off all the cash as well. Okay, so it's not ideal. It's not a brilliant thing because it is a bit of a long drive, but he doesn't do much else. Bill Burns has had a very easy sort of life so far. So there we go. Hopefully, hopefully that little sort of, uh, that little change there will keep things ticking over slightly more efficiently for the whole sort of brick wine operation. We have a couple of people, so the Novak, so Lee Novak or Clara Novak, who want to teach us how to make bootleg whiskey. Do you know what? Yes, I'm interested. So, okay, so you down here, 164. Okay, you like us. Now, is the other one over here? No, that's not you. It's not you either. It's you just there, 10. Okay, do you know what? Yeah, we'll go and get the skill from her because that'll get our reputation up a little bit. And that will be very handy. So, yeah. Okay, Penge covered. Let's go and have a chat what they're going to need. It's normally just a great big kind of money deposit, isn't it? Um, okay, I'm looking to learn new skills. Um, yeah, what will it take? Uh, 80 moonshine and a thousand of the monies. Okay. Okay. One of those is easier to do than the other. Um, the Johnster is, is there. Is he with, oh no, has the Johnster got all the, has he got all the moonshine on board? No, he hasn't. It looks like we're waiting for the next lot of moonshine. Oh, and we're running out of crocs. Crocs are a bit of an issue. Yeah, we are having a bit of a, uh, a croc supply problem. It is not looking good. We might need to employ a person to just drive around the place, pick up crocs from wherever they can. So I don't know, from over here, perhaps, pick up some crocs and then just drop 10 crocs off at each of our places and then just you know, repeat that route over and over again. I think that might be what we need to do because otherwise we are going to keep running out of crocs. And there's only so many crocs that Penge Cupboard wants to go and pick up and load and then unload and such like. He wants to go and, you know, enjoy all this ridiculous amount of money he's making. He wants to go and try all the teas and eat all the cake. He doesn't really want to be doing all this sort of croc lifting around. So I think that's what we should do. I think we should get a delivery driver to actually go and drop off crocs, specifically at the four sort of, you know, production places. That could be very helpful because, yeah, otherwise we are going to struggle with this repeatedly over and over again. And do you know what we could do, though? Right now, we could get the $1,000 in. That would not be so complicated. There we go. So we have a bit of our kind of arrangement sorted, but not the other bit. We've got the easy bit done. A grand in cash, that's fine. We found that down the back of a sofa. The 80 crocs of moonshine is a little bit harder to get our hands on right now. But okay, there you go. Enjoy a grand. And I think we have to go ahead and get this person set up to go and drop off crocs to all of our operations. Otherwise, it's just going to end up in a great big, complicated, horrible mess. And I think Eugene Pierce here is going to fit the bill quite nicely indeed. So I've uh, filtered it on friendly again. So uh, Eugene here is quiet. I mean, that's okay. That doesn't really matter too much to us. It's not so much of a problem. Friendly, that's very good. Doing some deliveries, really anything that involves people. This may be a choice crew member and they are sharp eyed. So they have good driving skills. I don't quite know what that translates to in the game. I mean, do they get extra movement points or something? I'm not entirely sure, but there we go. I think Eugene seems like a good candidate for this. However, we do have to go all the way over there. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it's a bit of a trek, but we'll make our way over there now. It's fine. Okay, hello, how are you? Can we please get that person on board? Here we go. The cousin you have, Eugene, who is looking for a job. Tell me more, absolutely. Eugene seems amazing. Welcome aboard, Eugene. There we go. I mean, this is a little bit of a departure from our sort of normal recruitment process because normally we have an operation set up and then we have a person that goes to work in the place and then we have a person delivering the goods. 
to and from that particular place. But now we've kind of got this extra person, this kind of, you know, super person who's going to go and help out all the different places, which is all very good indeed. So, okay, right, so now, where are you? You're down here. Right, Eugene, welcome aboard. I like your hat. It's very good. So, can we put you in a vehicle, please? Let's put you in... Uh, hang on a minute. A small delivery truck. I mean, which one? That one will do for now. There you go. So now, Eugene, I think he'll come up there now, won't he? Okay, so, right, Eugene, first thing you need to do, you need to pop over here, grab a little bit of money if you don't have some already. There's nothing in your vehicle. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so grab, uh, I mean, I don't know, grab $100. Would that be enough to, would that be enough to repair the vehicle? I would like to think it would be. Pop over here and just get that thing repaired because it does look a little bit kind of tight. $51, splendid. Right, okay. So his vehicle is now all repaired, which is excellent. So now what we want him to do, I think we want him to just drive around the place. There's a load of places over here that sell crocs. So go over there, pick up as many stoneware crocs as he can, and then just go to the wine place and drop some off, the moonshine place and drop some off, the cider place and drop some off, and then drop any remaining ones. So maybe you know, 10, 10, 10, and everything else at the beer place. And then just keep doing that. So I think that should keep things ticking over with crocs. This could be quite complicated, couldn't it? Um, okay, right, so let's get a thing set up. Uh, where are we? Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, new delivery. Uh, let's go and edit all this. So let's call it um, Crocs for all, exclamation mark. Yeah, it's all happy. Right, assign a driver. So, yep, it's Eugene. Here we go, Eugene. Okay, so first step, we want to pick up some cash. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Ensure cash on hand. What's the difference between ensure cash on hand and storage pickup cash. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is. Let's go for an insure cash on hand. Insure cash on hand exactly zero. Um, oh, okay, hang on. So you can go to all and you can say, oh, okay, right, so yeah, pick up a certain amount. It doesn't really make much difference, does it? Um, pick up, you're gonna need a bit of money to borrow those crocs. So pick up, I don't know, $250. That should be plenty. So pick up $250 from Agnes's place. And then we just want to go through and buy all of the crocs that we can. Now we do have people buying crocs from this bit over here. So these are normally empty, but there are plenty of places over there that um, that are selling crocs that we should possibly go and get the stuff from. So don't wear crocs. Yeah, not over there. That would be silly. Yeah, there's three places there. That place is always a bit sort of uh, a bit dry of crocs because we go and get them as are those places. We don't really want him to have to come all the way over here. Hopefully, these three places should be okay. So if you head off to, I don't know, Cafe Hamburg first. Uh, yes, yeah, so for Cafe Hamburg, buy all of the crocs you can, please. And then go down to, hang on a second, where are we? Stoneware crocs, not that place. Then Cafe Budapest and buy all of those. And then... We want to, yep, they want to buy Crocs. Where are they? There they are. So not there again. It's determined, isn't it? And then Cafe Taurus. It might make sense to go to Taurus and then Budapest on the way back, actually. So Cafe Taurus. Hang on. Where is where's that? Cafe Taurus. Buy all of the Crocs. Hang on. Move that up a bit. Yes, yeah, so you go there. Taurus. Then go to that cafe there. And then come back and start dropping them off. So here we go. So let's go to... So storage, no, not pick up, storage drop off. Come past the, the suds and such place first, won't you? So let's go to suds and such and drop off. This is going to be fine. This is all going to work brilliantly, everybody. Um, drop off um, 10 of those. Drop off 10 of those, please. That'll be fine. And then we want to go to the next place. So, yep, yeah, that's all fine at the next step. So, yep, storage drop off. Then we go to the deli so the moonshine place then cider then beer and then we're kind of back at the start yeah okay right let's do that and let's get that all set up in terms of you know all the whole delivery route shenanigans okay i think this is it so he goes to agnes's place he gets exactly 250 lovely dollars then he goes to those three places somewhere over here and picks up a lot of crocs then he comes back here he drops off 10 at the wine place he drops off 10 at the moonshine place, 10 at the cider place, and then drops off whatever's left at the beer place. Because generally, the beer place needs a lot more because it has a kind of you know, a one, one sort of turn, one week turnaround time. And that's it. 
and then he repeats again. So he will ensure that he has exactly $250 in cash. So he will take whatever he needs to top up to that and then go and just repeat. I think that is what we give a go to. I think let's, let's see if that works. Let's see if that works. It might not work. It might be a load of nonsense, but let's just see if that actually helps out a little bit because we are encountering quite a lot of problems now with places not able to make their sort of lovely booze. Okay, right. Let's see if he actually gets on with things. Okay, well, keeping an eye on Eugene, he's made it all the way over here. So he's picking up his first lot of first lot of crocs from there, which is not too bad. That is pretty good. So let's see, has he bought any? He's got 30 crocs on board. So already he has enough crocs to deal with three of our places. So say, what's he going to do first? So the wine place, the moonshine place, and the cider place. So they're going to get 10 crocs each, which is very, very good. So let's just move time on again a little bit. And just see how he is doing. So he's going past Officer Gerald. Hello, Officer Gerald. Look, a new friend for you to say hello to. Right, he's picked up all the crocs, I think. So now he's got 80 of them. Oh, that is brilliant. Okay, and it looks like... I know the stuff is going on, but yeah, it's all fine. It's all fine. He's dropping them off. So 10 dropped off there. 10 dropped off there because now he's got... He's got... He's got none. He's made it all the way around here and he's dropped them all off. Okay, Eugene, how are we looking over here now? So there are 81 crocs in there and they need 56 to do their thing. They do need some more malt syrup, but that's part of somebody else's uh, somebody else's delivery route thing. Okay. Okay, that is very good. Okay, right. Welcome aboard, Eugene. You are very, very important. I mean, you are a, you're a cog in a machine, but you are a very, very important cog in the great big kind of, you know, cupboard crew machine. And Bill Burns has leveled up again. Well done, Bill. Okay, right. What do we do for you, Bill? So currently, yeah, you're on level two for smart opportunists. So that's action points and level two for efficient driver, which is movement points. I don't think you need any of those things here because we don't really care about Alias, because we just paid the police off, so there's no real heat going on. And then, um, yeah, you've already got Delivery Dash up to level one, and you are quite popular. So how about, how about you have some more movement points? There you go, Bill. You enjoy. You can get around a little bit quicker now. Oh, and this is very good. Eugene has already leveled up. Well done, Eugene. I am very impressed. Okay, right, you have to go some way to get over to these places that sell the crocs. So I think an increase to your movement points is going to be a very, very good thing indeed. So there we go. Hopefully he can get over there a little bit quicker and then, you know, buy all the stuff. And then I think we might do that again. And then we might give him an action point boost. Because I think he has three action points anyway. So he should be okay with that. And then Penge Cupboard was just popping over here to see Edwin. Because we haven't heard from Edwin in ages. Oh look, he just doesn't like us. Oh, so about that product I paid for. You've been patient and patience is rewarded. I'm so sorry, Edwin. I completely forgot about this. There we go. Um, yeah, we bought some baseball bats. We have a sudden very keen interest in baseball. Also, Edwin thinks we do. Um, yeah, into the meats and cheeses place. That means he likes us a bit again. Um, okay, got anything for me? Some industrial alcohol. This is a gift from me and my friends and I insist you take it. One industrial alcohol has been loaded into our vehicle. Uh, we've learned about a new resource. Alcohol has significant uses in many industries and remains perfectly legal for machines, just not for human consumption. Okay. Right, so one, one thing of it. Okay. I mean, let's go and put that in the storehouse. I don't think we've come across anything that needs that quite yet, but okay, fine, let's drop it off. I just realised that we did not have Eugene going to repair his vehicle at any point, so now he does actually go and do that. So he drops off 10 crocs at the wine place, then he gets his vehicle repaired if it needs it, and then he just carries on as he was. And Leroy Hart has levelled up, so the guy who runs the wine operation. Um, let's get you, let's get you doing this. So you can have uh, this up to level two to increase the amount of brick wine made from each batch of grape concentrate because we're struggling to get grape concentrate. So if we could, you know, squeeze each grape just a little bit more to get some more wine out of it, that would be wonderful. So, okay, we will have a bit of that. Now, I didn't, you know, didn't go and check what we had before. I'm not entirely sure. Um, plus 16 plus 16 extra crocs of wine from having the brick wine sort of making skill up to level two. That is no bad thing at all. That is very good. Yeah, made 88 last time. We are struggling for grape concentrate. We've got 7.77 barrels and 51.84 crocs. Well, that is all very frustrating, isn't it? We're not even one off of a whole load of grape concentrate and one off of a croc, but we can't make anything. That is a little bit frustrating. Okay, 
Never mind. I'm sure they'll get it sorted. Okay, so we have a tiny, tiny problem with the whole moonshine operation, and that is that we finally burned through all of that neutral alcohol that we had. I mean, we had so much of that, and it seemed like that would last forever, but obviously it has not, because now we are down to 0.96 bottles of it. Someone swigged 0.4 of a bottle or whatever. 0.04 of a bottle, maths with Penge. But uh, yeah, so we don't have enough to make any more moonshine. However, can we go and get any neutral alcohol? Do we have any nearby? I don't really think we do. There's bottles and stuff. I mean, yeah, there is some all the way over there. There is some all the way over here. That's not in anybody else's turf. So we might have to get Penge covered to go all the way down there. I completely forgot to send Steve down here to have a chat with what's her name. I completely forgot. Oh, botherations. Where is she? She's all the way over there now. No, she's a little bit too protected. We can't send Steve in on his own now. We could have possibly done it there, but I think now that would be ill-advised. Um, okay, yeah, we could. We could get... I mean, Steve is over there. Steve, are you able to sort of get to here in one turn? Yes, you are. And it's okay, because that's in no one's turf. Do you have any money? Only $93. Okay. Um, hello. Can we buy some neutral alcohol? I would love to do this. Can we buy 10 lots? Um, cost 140. We've got 93. Oh, <laughs> botherations. Okay, we'll have... We'll have six lots, please. There we go. We might come back for the rest at some point in the future. Okay, right. That is a bit of a problem. And yeah, there's none over here, is there? There's none over there. There's hardly any over there. Yeah, that uh, that is a bit of an issue right there. Okay, so Penge Cupboard has identified this place here, the Midway Bowling Alley, as a very, very good place to turn into a front. Because if we do, we get that corner. And then I think it can expand to just there, 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 and there. So just having one front here could mean that we increase the amount of corners under our control by five, which is very good indeed. So here we go. So he's willing to listen to us. It says opinion 10, but the opinion is actually 20. So, okay, we want to expand and all this kind of stuff. They need one and a half thousand dollars. In fact, one thousand five hundred and ninety dollars. Uh, yeah, okay, it's fine. I think that's going to do really well for us. If we can keep that all supplied and if we can make sure that you know, enough people join the lovely, fun, happy protection club that we offer... I think that'll be very good for us. Um, and Leroy Hart. Leroy has already... Hang on, you're in the wine thing, aren't you? Um, okay, right. So he wants to call him Scarface. Let's not call him Scarface. Let's call him Wineface. <laughs> He's just got a big red face because you get a red face when you drink wine and such like, don't you? Um, it's either that or Count Druncula when you get the red teeth because you've been drinking red wine. Um, let's have Wineface. There we go. <laughs> we just, just call him wine, Wineface Hart. Oh, okay. That doesn't sound quite as good. Um, okay, right. Penge cover. Go over here. Pick up some money from this vast, vast amount of money that we have over here. Um, just take take that much. Uh, we, but that's what we did to... Uh, we bought those to get uh, his opinion of us up. We bought some oak barrels. I don't necessarily think we need those, but it's all fine. Right. Let's go back over here and have another chat with him. Here we go, Marco. I return with great big piles of cash. So there you go. Have almost $1,600. A pleasure doing business with you. So up to 41 corners. Okay, and now we need to go and expand a bit. So yeah, $15 to get over into that area there, which is no bad thing. Um, also, he does want to talk to us about a mission thing, which probably would not be a bad thing to do because then he'll like us even more. So okie doke. Um, I'm only supposed to pick up envelopes. Uh, watching you while I've been working has given me some ideas about how I might be able to help. Okay. Oh, it's another vehicle thing. Do you know what? Yeah, all right. I mean, we can probably give you the cash right now. We'll give you the cash. I mean, I don't know where we could get some crowbars from. I have no idea. We'll have to go and like, look under some sofas and behind chairs and things. Oh my goodness me, look at that. I've just happened across five crowbars in the underpants drawer of Pete Myers, who runs Peter's American Meats and Cheeses. Who'd have thought it? Here we go. I have some crowbars. You don't want to know where I found them. It's all absolutely fine. And there we go. Right, so yeah, the, the option to get the skill has now gone. Um, We will have another small delivery truck, please. Just park that somewhere you know, on the side of the highways of Chicago and it's all fine. Yeah, there we go. We just leave it there, I think. But he seems quite happy. He seems quite happy with us now. 65. I mean, not that long ago, he didn't even know who we were. And now he's given us a vehicle. And, you know, he's broken in and stolen a vehicle for us. And he's one of our fronts as well which is brilliant stuff. Okay, this is all very good. Hello, Marco. Welcome aboard. And there we go. Our new front has been added to the list of fronts that Frowny Face goes and helps out. Oh, and that's quite appropriate. Frowny Face has leveled up. Oh, well done, Frowny Face. 
Um, okay, right, you haven't got much left to actually go and improve. Do we give you more action points or more movement points? I mean, given you have to go all the way over to that little bit of town now, maybe we'll increase your movement points just to get you over there a little bit kind of quicker. And I think it might be that time of year again. It's the time of year when we go and donate very, very generously to our wonderful local police force. So hello, Officer Evelyn, how are you? Here we go. Right, what do you want? $637, that's fine. We have that. That is splendid. Right, pleasure doing business with you. And it's lovely to chat with you again. Here, would you like some tea? I've just realized that I've left Steve over here. I did not tell Steve to come back home. So all that time, Steve has been sat outside the shop that sells neutral alcohol. And he's got that six, you know, the six bottles that he bought, but he's not actually bought it back home. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate, isn't it? Right, hang on a minute. Steve, <laughs> Steve, make your way back home. Make your way over here, please. It's going to take you an awfully long time because it is quite some distance away. Um, yeah, you come back here, drop that stuff off, because, yeah, we just don't have enough. We don't have enough. We're slowly stocking up on the Crocs. We just do not have enough neutral alcohol. So, okay, you come back here, drop that stuff off, then pick up some money, then go all the way back over there and try and pick some more up. Oh, my goodness me. What a bit of a rigmarole. And here we go. Um, Penge cupboard. Um, okay, hello. Got anything for me? Some hard cider. Okay, don't mind if I do. 57 hard cider added to the vehicle. Okay, right, that's that's nice, that's good, we need that kind of stuff. Um, and, um, okay, got any leads? What do you want here? Oh, hardware store. What are we going to do? Oh, it's crowbars, it's crowbars again, okay. <laughs> oh, Edwin, okay, yeah, fine, we'll have some crowbars, wonderful. Oh, and we got another corner. I think we're now in possession of that corner over there. Okay, this is very good, right, okay, penge cupboard. If you could drive over here on the next turn, yeah. So my business aren't doing very well. I think we know. I think we know which ones: the moonshine and the beer, I imagine. Right. So Penge cupboard, head over here. This is very exciting. Right. Okay. Let's have a chat with some of these people. Hello. Would you like to join the wonderful protection club? Let's demand payment. Right. That person has said yes. They're a bit grumpy with us, but yeah. Over time, they'll be fine. Um. Hello, Agne, is that? Um. Right. We're in charge. Demand payment, and they said yes as well. Okay. This is looking very good. This is looking good. We'll help that front out right now anyway. So how's the front doing? Yep, there you go. $15. That's absolutely fine. And can you please expand to another corner? Another $10. But then we're going to go over in that direction and expand a little bit more. Okay, right. Wonderful stuff. It's all looking good over here. Okay, now it's time to go and donate generously to Officer Annie's charity of choice. So Okay, let's have a look what's going on here. And it's $654. Yes, that is wonderful. Pleasure doing business with you. Also, I can't help but notice that there is a safe house just here. Um, okay, let's have a rummage through there. $170. Switchblade, beer, moonshine club, brick wine, crowbar. Okay, more crowbars. Brilliant. Okay, I mean, that's not a bad haul. That's not a bad haul at all. I imagine... I imagine Penge Cupboard's vehicle is quite full right now. He's like, you know, trying to lean round great big crocks of cider and moonshine and everything else as he's trying to drive around the place. Um, let's uncover that as well. There we go. So we reveal what that is. And we have two people leveled up. Right, so, uh, yes. Yeah, so the person that works in the back room brewery, that's good. Um, do we get you up to production manager level two or do we make more beer? I think production manager level two sounds like a good thing. So there we go. And Eugene, Eugene has leveled up again. Okay, Eugene, more movement points because you have to travel quite some way. So there you go. Eugene can travel even further now in one turn. And Steve has arrived at the moonshine operation. So there you go. Put some neutral alcohol in. It's not enough to actually generate any moonshine at all, but it's better than nothing. Right now, Steve, go and grab a load of money from over here and then make your way back over there and get some more moonshine, please. No, not moonshine. Neutral alcohol. That's the stuff. Okay, now we've got to the point where Jean or Jean, I assume it's Jean. So Jean Carter, who works in the bottled beer place, she can now have a nickname. Although I don't know if she needs a nickname. I don't know if she needs a nickname. Do you know what? Let's call her the Bottler. That that sounds good. It sounds like a kind of you know a sort of uh, a Batman villain from the original sort of series in the sixties or whatever. So the Bottler. There we go. Because she makes bottled beer. That'll do the job. You can be called that splendid. And Penge Cupboard is going to drop off all the stuff that he just picked up from that safe house over here at the Speakeasy, which is wonderful. Oh, and the hard cider that came from uh, from our friendly gang fella, sort of Edwin as well. So there you go. You can have all of that in there, which is very good because. The, um, the whole speakeasy was looking a little bit empty. 
it was looking a little bit kind of dry in there, which is not very good at all. But there we go. There is now a few little bits and bobs to sell. And with that done, I think we will finish things up for now. Now, you might have noticed that we have moved time on quite a lot in this particular part. We've done quite a lot of turns. And that's because I'm a little bit concerned that our save file is very, very soon going to be too old to keep up to date with all the sort of new versions of the game. And we're not going to be able to finish our series because already we've had to roll back one version of City of Gangsters because our save file was just, you know, not compatible with the latest version and they're not going to keep the old versions around forever that's not how they're going to do things so yes we do need to hurry things on a little bit which is why we're kind of flying through some turns but i think we do have about two and a bit years it's 1933 that the sort of prohibition ends and the game ends so I think we have about two and a half years left. So I don't know what that's going to translate to in terms of sort of uh, parts, maybe two or three more parts. But I think that's it. But yes, we're going to see us kind of, you know, going through it quite quickly now, just to make sure that we get to the end of the series and we're not thwarted by, you know, technical gremlins and such like. But yeah, we'll finish up for the moment. I think next time I'd like to take a look at what we can do for the hotel. So we either get the kind of cordial thing in or the gin thing in. So you know, set something up in our new building over here. And then also, and I know I've said this a few times, but I think we might actually have to go and have a fight now. I think we need to take out the Hewitts. They're getting too close. Our brother works for them, which is a terrible, terrible thing. There he is. There's Leonard, the traitor. Oh, dear me. So, um, so yes, we do have to go and take them out, I think, which is not going to be a happy thing. It's not going to be a good moment having to fight our own brother. But there we go. So I think we should go and have a fight with them. Money is looking good. Money is looking splendid. So we can afford to sort of, you know, stop doing the delivery route things for a little while. And then, yeah, just go and have a bit of a ruckus over here. Get people healing up. Then go and have another fight. Have another sort of heal up. And just keep doing that until hopefully all of these are eliminated. And then, yes, we can sort of you know, get rid of them off the map and stop them interfering kind of over here. But there we go. And of course, we'll try and expand over here a bit more. That'd be very good as well. And we'll just keep things ticking over as best we can. But yes, we shall finish up for the moment. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in City of Gangsters. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Move out of the way, friend. I'm going to completely ignore you and do some comment moderating. <laughs> Kung Fu Croquet. Maria, you've broken my heart. There you go, some more flowers that are stored on the back of my pants. Lovely, there we go. As you can see, I'm having the wildest of times. Enormous banana masking. <laughs>